Hi folks. So literally just yesterday, we finished planting all of our beautiful summer crops into our polytunnels. So we thought it would be really nice to give you a beginning of the season tour. So you can follow along with us throughout the season and see how everything grows right from where it starts. And we've also had a few questions about the planting combinations that we use in here. So I thought I would explain a little bit more about that as we go around as well. So this is tunnel one or T1 as we refer to it. And mostly this is my tunnel and it's not really my tunnel, it's both of our tunnels, but I tend to look after this tunnel a little bit more and then tunnel two, T2, the next one, Dan tends to look after a little bit more. So in here, we have got at the top, uh, trusty Cape gooseberries. And the two at the top of this tunnel, much to my surprise, actually survived the harsh winter that we had this year, which I know it's not harsh for a lot of you guys that will be watching, but it was harder than we normally have here in the south of England. And the Cape gooseberries are only really perennial inside the tunnel. We've tried them outside and they don't grow perennially. But these ones here, this is actually their fourth growing season. And really interesting, our tunnels are on a slight slope and it is definitely warmer at the top of the tunnels. And the two Cape gooseberries that I've got in the top corners survived. The two at the bottom didn't, so I have replaced those. But anyway, we love Cape gooseberries, amazing fruit as you go into autumn. So yeah, they have a firm place in all the four corners of both of our tunnels. So planting combinations. We um, grow quite a combination of crops together in here. And it's not necessarily always um, put together in the sense of companion planting. Now, we don't purposely plant anything together that we know aren't good companions, but the main reason for the combinations that we grow together is actually to make the best use of this space. So what we're trying to do is layer, a bit like we do in the food forest. So you've got your layering systems. So to start with down here on this side, I've got Molokai purple sweet potatoes. And um, we grow some potatoes in the tunnels, the more tender varieties, but we do also grow sweet potatoes outside. So Molokai purple is a more heat loving variety we found. So we are growing that one inside. So that is gonna make a beautiful ground cover, a living ground cover. You can actually eat the young tips of the sweet potatoes as well. It's something that Dan has been promising me for many years to make me one of his be beautiful dishes that he knows from Borneo, but I'm still waiting to try this. So maybe this year, it's on camera now. And then we've got at the back, so all along the back of my polytunnel here, alternating with the sweet potatoes, we've got aubergines. And I've got two different types of aubergines, um, the classic Black Beauty, and then also a long purple variety. And then in front of the aubergines, because the aubergines grow taller, so I've got those towards the back. And then in front of the aubergines, I've got peppers and this row all along here is uh, sweet peppers and I think if I've planted them correctly it should be alternating between a pointy red and a big yellow pepper. Um, last year peppers didn't do so well for us we did have a few harvests but the year before we had a really good harvest of um, sweet peppers so it is a crop that we're still um, trialing to see how good a crop we can actually get from them but we get some really good heats in here they do need a long season to um, grow and mature 
but fingers crossed it will be a good year this year. So then dotted around as well in between the peppers I've got some chickpeas and I grow, grew chickpeas for the first time last year. I'm actually trialing them outside as well as inside. Um, we had a small harvest from them in here last year and initially I kind of envisaged that as my climbing layer on this side of the bed but I realized that the chickpeas actually only grow to probably just about knee height but I will be adding a couple of other things that aren't quite ready yet. Um, I'll probably add a climbing spinach. We grew Malabar spinach for the first time last year, a beautiful red variety. And so I'll probably add a couple of Malabar spinach vines when they're ready to go in and they will create a climbing layer as well. So yeah, so that's basically all down this side of the tunnel is just sweet potatoes, aubergines, and red and yellow sweet peppers and chickpeas. Oh, and then we always get some self-seeded um, nasturtiums, which I absolutely love. I love the fact that they um, just continue to grow here, even though I've only ever planted them in once. And we had a really big overhaul this year, so I wasn't sure if they'd kind of come back through, but there's not as many. Normally we have a big cluster that comes up at the bottom. They haven't come yet, there's still time, but love the nasturtiums. We eat both the flowers and the leaves on the nasturtiums. They make a great addition to salads. And I'm gonna have to pull this out that I've just spotted here. I've got a couple of little bits of naughty bindweed creeping in here. So we we'll just pull that out as I've seen it. Yeah, so there is a newly planted Cape gooseberry at the bottom. That's one that I grew on from seed. Um, and I sowed the seed for that at the same time as I sowed my tomato seed. So at the very beginning of March for us here. And then coming up the middle of this tunnel, I've still got these two tall plants you can see in the middle. Uh, this is actually leaf in celery left over from um, the winter planting. And it's still good. There's still lots of good, good fresh leaves on there. So I'll keep that going um, until it needs to come out. And then, so the main crop that we grow through this middle section is our beautiful tomatoes. And in here, I have mainly got a um, heritage, an heirloom tomato, which we absolutely love called Purple Cherokee. And it has had the best flavor of tomato that we've ever tasted over the last few years that we've grown it. It almost tastes like you've already salted it when you eat it. So I don't know, a real rich mineral taste. Um, I have also got, I think five plants of uh, sun gold tomato, which I'm trying for the first time this year. I've not grown them before, but they're meant to be a really nice early yellow cherry tomato. And then you can see in between each tomato, I have got um, French marigolds in here. And the marigolds are supposed to be good companion plants for tomatoes, but also they just look beautiful when everything blooms in here and the marigolds are in flower it just looks absolutely stunning so they look great they offer good companions so why not and then down all down the front here in front of the tomatoes we've got hot chilies and in here if i remember rightly this is alternating jalapenos and a new one that we're doing this year actually called Cyclone. And it's a pepper that I'm going to use as um, like paprika. So I'm going to actually try smoking it or drying it at least later on in the year to replace the smoked paprika, which I currently buy. So that's something new we're trying this year. And then also actually one thing I haven't put in this tunnel yet that will be going all along this other side of the tomatoes is Tulsi, holy basil. I'd like to grow a lot of that because I use it medicinally for tinctures and um, herbal teas, dried for tea. So it's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, that's still to go in. If we take a look down this side of the tunnel, 
this is where I have got all the cucurbits, so the, or the cucurbits, the melons, the cucumbers. So again, starting with a Cape gooseberry in the corner, then on each of the posts of the polytunnel, I have got a watermelon in. And these literally only went in a couple of days ago, so they're still just finding their way. And then these strings here that are on triple strings, these plants here that are on triple strings rather, um, they are trombone courgettes. And we grew those for the first time last year and they were amazing. We're gonna try growing them outside as well this year because apparently that's fine in, in our climate here in the south. Uh, but yeah, we're still putting them in the polytunnel to make sure we get a good crop because they are awesome. They offer you a summer courgette and also a winter squash when you let them mature. So really valuable plum. Um, just for a bit of fun, I've got a couple of cucumelons in here. They are a cross between a cucumber and a watermelon and they're just like little tiny mini watermelons that grow all over the vine. They're pretty awesome. Great for kids, great just for snacking on. They do kind of grow quite big in here I found last year so I'm just trying to give them a bit of a smaller space and keep them more condensed this year. Um, then I've got alternate cucumbers here, uh, just a green slicing cucumber. cucumber. Uh, I think that one is Tamra and then I've got the yard long cucumbers which we absolutely love or Armenian cucumbers uh, which grow really really big and prolific so they're alternating and we normally let the cucumbers sprawl a little bit more maybe over three or four strings but we're actually going to try um, single stem pruning them this year so a little bit nervous about that but hopefully, because we've got our new, <coughs> excuse me, our new watering system installed this year, which you can check out in one of our previous videos, um, we're hoping that we'll have to spend less time watering in here. And the time that we would have spent watering, we can be paying more attention to pruning and keeping our crops really nice and tidy and healthy. So that's the plan there. Um, I am actually still spot watering in here at the moment just because the plants are all newly in. Um, we want to make sure obviously they do get good water. Uh, but once their roots have spread and we know that they are reaching out, then just using our watering system, which is just below the wood chips, should be more than enough. So really excited about that in the tunnel this year as well. That should be a game changer for us. So yeah, I think there's 10 cucumbers in here. And then these last two strings um, are, are loofah plants. And I have mixed success with the loofah. Last year they didn't do so well. The year before they did really well. I've always grown them lower down in the polytunnel. Um, but now, yeah, realizing that I think it stays hotter up the top, I'm gonna try them up the top this year and see if they do any better for it. And then finally up the top in this tunnel here, which I am really excited about, we have got a couple of ginger plants. And this one has got a lovely green sprout on it already. There is another one under the ground here, which hopefully will be coming up really soon. We did try ginger in the polytunnel once before, but what we didn't know at the time then is in our climate, we probably needed to leave it in for two years before we started harvesting. So this is a bit more of a long-term plant in the polytunnel. Again, I've put it at the top because it tends to be warmer and drier up here where we're on a slope. So yeah, super excited. So that, that is polytunnel one. Okay, so polytunnel two, and this is Dan's polytunnel in here. So um, I don't know the planting quite as well, but I was in here with him just yesterday, finishing it off. So hopefully I'll be able to go through everything. And he's obviously here behind the camera to jump in if there's anything I'm not sure about. But yeah, so just so you know, guys as well, these polytunnels are 54 foot long, 
by 14 foot wide. And we can grow a heck of a lot of food in these spaces. But it's kind of premium space, if you like. It's, it's high real estate for the plants. So we wanna make the very most of this space. And that is why we are using the layers to make sure we pack as much into this really valuable space as possible. And what I'm actually hoping to do, if I can get organized this year, is to start um, making a note of actually what we get out of here so we can get some really good figures on how much food we actually produce in these spaces. So yeah, hopefully I'm gonna try that this year. Okay, so in here, it's a kind of similar vibe to the tunnel next door in terms of the layering. We have the sweet potatoes as the ground layer. Um, so they will just end up covering the whole of this bed. It looks absolutely stunning. So stay tuned to see that later in the year. And it's Burgard or Burgard is the variety that we're growing in here. Um, some people like to pronounce it in either of those ways. And then climbing layers. So there's lots of climbing layers in this tunnel and our climbing layers are beautiful, juicy melons. And I think we've got three or four types of climbing melons that we're growing in here. Um, we've got a Collective Woman's Farm, which is one we started growing last year. It's really good. We've got Minnesota Midget, which is a really reliable melon. Then we've got an orange, I think it was a different variety, an orange honeydew melon that we're trying for the first time this year. And then there is also D. Charentes, which is one we've grown for a few years now, which we absolutely adore for its really vibrant flavor. Then the front row of this tunnel is all hot chilies and we're going to have a lot of hot chilies this year if they all grow on. There is a variety, there is one called Vindaloo. Now let's just get this right. There's a Portuguese pepper, which again is a new one we're trying this year. And then I think we've also got some jalapenos and some cayenne peppers in here as well. Um, yeah, I think I got a bit excited with sewing. Everything came on looking good. We've got the space, so we're just going to grow it and we will find a use, we can pickle them, we can freeze them, we can sell them, we can give them away. So I'm sure we will be able to use whatever it is that we grow in this space. So yeah, that's pretty much the same pattern all the way down here um, to here, I think. So all up here is the climbing melons and then it changes a little bit down the second half of this tunnel. And I've got to get this right because I haven't put my labels in yet, but I actually planted. And so here we've got a trombone courgette, which will also be a winter squash as I was explaining. And then we've got a yard long cucumber and then another trombone courgette. And then I think Dan has put in, he's grown some bottle gourds uh, for the first time this year. So he's got a couple of gourds there and we're going to try the gourds both inside and outside. And then the same as in my tunnel, we've got the Cape gooseberries in all four corners. And I think there was only one of Dan's that carried through this year from this tunnel. So he's got three new ones planted in here. Then up the middle, oh, hang on. He wants me to point this out. So this is one of the things that Dan is very excited about growing this year. And he has gone mad for taro. So it's a bit of an experiment this year. We've got lots of different varieties of taro and edos. And we're trying them both inside and outside to see how they go. And if you haven't come across taro before, it's kind of probably seen as more of a tropical plant. It's got these beautiful big leaves and then it has kind of like a tuber that grows under the ground that kind of looks a bit like a hairy swede and you can just chop the head off the leaf part and in tropical climates you can actually just replant the head and then you eat the tubery part that's underneath and it's kind of a bit like a potato it's like a starchy crop but 
really good, really excited about this. And I will show you some more of his plantings as we move around. So the same is in the tunnel next door, T1. Our main crop through the middle of these tunnels is tomatoes. And Dan has got all of the same tomato variety in here. It's called Risentrube and it is a prolific cherry tomato which grows great big stems of flowers and then tomatoes so much so that sometimes we just can't keep up with them but they're delicious it's another heritage variety we love them and uh, we've just got to spend a little bit more time on pruning these plants to really hone how we grow them this year but again like i say in next door having the watering system in here now we're hoping that that will free up the time to have more plant care going on same as in my tunnel we've got um, marigolds in between the tomatoes these are african marigolds in this side just to switch it up a little bit and then along the front we've got more um, peppers and these ones here i think um this is actually a mini bell pepper, a little orange mini bell pepper, so a sweet pepper. And then dotted in between um, the peppers at certain intervals, we've got these little guys, which are the Edos, which I was just saying about. They are very similar to the Taro, but I think if I'm getting this right, they are a smaller kind of version of the Taro. Dan's nodding his head, so. More like potatoes. More like potatoes. I'm learning, I'm learning. This is all just learning from what I hear him talking about all the time, so. Um, okay, so this side of the tunnel. More melons, have I got that right, Dan? Yeah. Melons, so yeah, more of the beautiful melons. On this side of the tunnel, the ground cover layer is the watermelons, so the same as one side of uh, the tunnel next door. We've got sweet potatoes as one ground cover. We've got watermelons as the ground cover on the other side. And yeah, we should have some beautiful tropical leaves of all the taro and edos as well, just popping up. Beautiful, juicy, sweet melons to climb up. Um, I think this is something different here on the triples. What have we got here on these triple strings, Dan? Can you remember? Oh, that's the same again, isn't it? So we've got an Armenian cucumber in the middle, so yard long cucumber in the middle, and then a trombone courgette on either side. I should know that, I actually planted those yesterday. <laughs> um, more melons to grow up, more watermelons as ground cover, more, ed is this Edos or Taro on the outside here, Dan? Edos. So okay, more Edos all along the outside of this row in the tunnel. It's gonna be an absolute feast of melons in this tunnel this year, if it all grows and takes off. And then finally at the top, we've got our trusty Cape gooseberries, which we absolutely love. Again, the same as next door, we've got a couple of small things to add into here. We'll probably add a little bit more of the climbing spinach, the Malabar spinach, adds beautiful color. And then we've also got some more basil to put in. I'll put all of the basil in the top side of this polytunnel, either side of the tomatoes. I did actually put a little bit of basil in, Thai basil yesterday. We missed that down there, but that is all good. There is lots more basil to go in. But yeah, that is polytunnel two. So this is how it looks right at the beginning of the season. If you follow along with us, we will be making more polytunnel tour videos throughout the season. And you can see how these spaces burst into this beautiful, lush, tropical feeling of just edible goodness. So I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us. We love reading your comments. We love hearing your questions. So drop them down below and we will catch you here again soon. Peace and plants.